With this movie, I'd like to show you how to use the new edge detection features in the Refine Edge dialog box. The Refine Edge dialog box allows you to edit the edge of your selections. So let's take a look at how this works. What I have here visible on my screen is the featherwoman.jpg image. This is available in your assets, so you can play along with me if you like. And what I want to do is I want to make a selection of this woman. I want to actually extract her from this smoky, cloudy background so I can use her either in a different composite image or possibly just create a transparent PSD of her image in order to place her in maybe an InDesign layout, something like that. So to do this, I of course have to make a selection of her. And one of the problems is that she has feathers for hair. As if hair isn't bad enough, we've got feathers here, soft edges all along the top of her head. And that is very, very difficult to select. But using Refine Edge, we can actually make that very, very easy. And so I'd like to show you how to do that now. We'll start out, as I explained in some of my other movies, by making a selection with the Quick Selection Tool. Quick Selection Tool is the most powerful selection tool, and generally you'll want to try working with it first, above all other selection tools. Now that I have the Selection Tool accessed from the Tools panel, I want to increase that brush size, and I can do that up here by dragging the size slider, or I can use the bracket keys. I'm going to press the right bracket key to make the cursor larger. We can make it smaller by pressing the left bracket key. Okay, so we'll click and drag over her image very loosely. I don't expect the area of feathers to be a precise selection because that's where Refine Edge is going to save the day. Okay, so we've got a pretty decent selection. We can try and add a little bit more with the tool if we want. It's not going to be perfect, and we don't expect it to, because Quick Selection Tool is not meant to handle these types of selections precisely. Okay, that's about as good as we're going to get. What I'd like to do now is click on this Refine Edge button up here in the Options panel. Click on that, and that brings up the Refine Edge dialog box. All right, let's zoom in some on the image. I'm going to press Command Plus a couple of times and then hold down the space bar. Temporarily access the hand tool, click and drag in order to position her next to this dialog box so we can see what's happening. What we want to do here is we first want to increase the radius. That's the area of transition between the hair and the background. All right. So we'll drag that up to the right a little bit. And we want to turn on this feature here in the edge detection area called Smart Radius. All right, that's going to help us control these soft edges. All right, I'm currently viewing this on a white background. You can change that if you want. There's all kinds of other different options on black, black and white, on layers if you have another layer already in the image that you want to see this over, which we don't. I actually want to see this on white because I think I'm going to use this on white or on another solid color in a different environment, perhaps in InDesign. So what I'd like to do is drag over the areas now with this tool. This brush allows us to control the area of transition between the soft feathers and that background that we're dropping. Okay, so if I increase the brush size again, right bracket key, and draw over that area, revealing more of those feathers, it's basically telling Photoshop that that background color is what we're trying to drop. And it will recognize the image area that we want to keep and drop the background color that we do not want to keep. Okay, we can do all that. Whoops, went a little bit too far. It's okay, we can always decrease that by pressing Option or Alt, clicking in that area. That's better. We can go over here. Don't need a whole lot over in this area. That actually looks pretty good. Decrease that brush size. And just up here is what we want. That's looking pretty good. All right, now we can increase the radius in order to soften and add a little bit more area. That's looking really good. Now, considering that this is a background that's predominantly white and gray, it's not adding much color that's reflecting in the feathers. If it were pink or blue or something like that, we would see those colors inside of 
the uh, feathered area in here, and we would want to get rid of that color. And that's where decontaminate colors comes in. You would turn that on and then drag the slider up as far as you need to in order to drop that color. We're not seeing a lot of color in here, so you don't necessarily have to turn that on in this particular instance. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. We now have our output options. We can output to a new layer with layer mask, or we can output to a new layer entirely, or just a layer mask, or a whole new document, or a new document with layer mask. And I think I'm going to choose new document and click OK. And there's my document. I now have my transparent PSD that I can save as a PSD and then place into InDesign over a different background. It's just as easy as that. It's amazing that you can do this using this tool. Let's zoom in some. We'll take a look at that. You can see there are the feathers. Very, very nice. Looking really, really good. Photoshop did a really good job of extracting the feather woman from her background 